Once again, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference is October the 4th, October the 5th, and October the 6th um, at the Sheraton Hotel, 400 North Olive Street, um, Dallas, Texas. The room is so beautiful. You can watch out of the room and see all of downtown. It's very beautiful. It's very lavish, very spacious. And the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be so strong in these meetings. And you're going to feel the fire of the Holy Spirit personally. And I look forward to um, seeing you all there on Sunday. There'll be a great big celebration that I'm having. So plan to stay on Sunday because all these days are going to be hype uh, filled with uh, tangible glory and fire but I'm going to be having a, I'm going to be having a big celebration on that Sunday and I don't want you to miss it if you miss it you're going to be terribly terribly sad <laughs> and you're going to feel left out and it's not going to be my fault because I done told you. I done told you. Sunday going to be a, a big celebration that I'm having. You know that my birthday going to be on that same week. And so there's going to be a big celebration that I'll be having on Sunday. And it's going to be very, very, very powerful. And you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Airports that you're coming in from are DAL, DAF. You can attempt DAL first. I believe DAL is closer in distance. DFW is closer in distance as well. But I think DAL is uh, cheaper according to price as well. Um, but make sure that you're there. And don't miss it because I done told you. And, of course, Saints, uh, Jesus has given me a special uh, grace and glory for um, for miracles and healing and uh, the tangible fire of God. And I'm so grateful. I don't take it for granted at all. Um, and um, I'm very appreciative of uh, this grace and this glory. And it's, it's wonderful. It's really wonderful. I was thinking about it today. Um, it's such a privilege to be called a friend of Jesus. King Jesus is, is not something that you take uh, for granted because uh, this is really the goal of life. 
this is the goal of life. Like, you know, some people ask you, you know, what's your goals? What's your goals? Some people say, I want to finish high school. I want to finish college. I want to get married. I want to have children. All that stuff is, you know. But ultimately, if you get all those goals accomplished and you have not Jesus, all those goals are just vanity. You can become the richest person financially, but if you're not rich in the spirit, if you're not rich in your soul, if you don't have eternal life, all those things that you accomplish are just vanity. Now you understand the place that uh, uh, Solomon was coming from. When Solomon was saying, you know, um, all these things are vanity. What you're hearing it from a wise man that has tasted everything. He tasted sex. He tasted uh, money. He tasted uh, lavish life. He tasted uh, friendship. He tasted um, luxury. He tasted wealth. He tasted riches. All, all that you could think about. He tasted the favor of God. He tasted encounters with God. He tasted the fire of God. Because saints, though, though it may not be talked about much, Solomon was a glory carrier. Uh, you remember when he was praying and dedicating the place to the Lord and the fire of God fell, the glory of God fell. So he was carrying the glory of God, the fire of God, which shows you that wealth and riches are glory and fire of God realm. That's why you got to be trained to get there. Because if you get there any type of way, you become a thief. But if you get there any other way, um, it brings sorrow. But when you get there through the glory realm, through the fire of God, you are already trained. So when you get those riches, those wealth, you know that that's just money for the gospel. It's just money for uh, what the Lord want to accomplish. Really, the real um, treasure is Jesus himself. You see, Jesus is really the treasure that um, we package. You know, the money and all the stuff is just a side a side uh, treasure, a side bar rather, not even a treasure, a side bar. The real treasure is Jesus. And so when you have him and you you become fearful of him and, and in love with him, then he give you all those other things. All those things shall be added unto thee. But the perspective of your life every single day is Jesus. You know, uh, Solomon was carrying the glory of God, the fire of God. And I was thinking about it. Um, I have a son in the ministry, uh, and they follow me very closely, him and his wife. It's a beautiful thing. I, I love when families follow me because I know, I know how the anointing will help them love one another. I know how the anointing will help them uh, uh, facilitate in greater, um, greater effectiveness. So I got a son that followed me. Um, and there was a mention about something, but I was thinking about, uh, you know, Solomon. There was the Queen of Sheba that came and honored him like very supernaturally, so in millions of dollars. But I was thinking about it, and I'll, I'll continue on this. I want you to think about this. Jesus came on the scene and said, there's one greater than Solomon here. It's very important that you understand the scriptures because in one text it said that there was no king like Solomon before. There'll be no king like Solomon afterwards. See, if you read that, this is what you're going to think in the natural Okay, well, Solomon, he off limits. But really, Solomon was a limit. Because Jesus said there's one greater than the limit up in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. I'm just getting started. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know the vibes. You know how we rocking. I'm just getting started. This this is about to be a hot broadcast. I'm just getting started. Don't worry.
Father, I receive your presence. Say, Father, I receive your presence. Say, King Jesus, take me over. Say, King Jesus, possess me. I acknowledge you, direct my path. Praise God. Marabaso Robo Corre You move
Once again, October the 4th to 5th to 6th, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference 2019. A fresh meeting, fresh oil, demonstration of the Holy Spirit, power of God. I mean, the glory of God sitting on us. The fire of the God sitting on us. The fire of God sitting on us. You know, I've been feeling it for these this whole year. Just been waiting for the Holy Spirit to give me the the go ahead. And I res I I received the divine assignment for this October. Right after my birthday. Man, I'm getting younger and younger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people in public sometimes talk so, oh, yo, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't, don't put your hand in my face. <laughs> don't put your hand in my face. <laughs> We're getting younger and younger. See, the more you serve the Lord, the more he beautify you. He beautify you. He beautify. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. It's the benefit for being in the presence of God. I don't plan to have wrinkles no time soon. If you got wrinkles, blessed be God. You got beauty wrinkles. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with you getting wrinkles. You aging gracefully. But blessed be his name. Me, Prophet Joshua. I don't plan to have no wrinkles no time soon. No, never. As a matter of fact, I prophesy and watch it. Y'all gonna see it come to pass. I'll never have wrinkles. <laughs> Solomon 
is a greater one than Solomon here. Now we had already read that there be no one like Solomon ever before him, like him before him, or after him. But if you read that in the natural, you're going to think, well, all right, so, so there'll never be another Solomon, and he was, but really, he was a limit. Because then Jesus comes on the scene and said, there's a one greater. Now, if you understand the word greater, the word greater means that this person was at a level. But my level is way higher. Now, remember this word greater. Because several times in the scripture, we see greater grace, number one. We see Jesus mention greater works, number two. We see Jesus mention greater is he that is in you. Number three. So we see the word of God keep revealing greater, 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 greater meaning that the level is higher. In Acts chapter four, when it said that great grace rested upon them, none of them lacked. See, this wasn't just grace because there was people that had grace that was still broke. There was people that had grace that was still in debt up to their neck. I'm talking about the neck that cut off your neck, the debt that cut off your neck. There was people that had grace that wasn't seeing no money. There was people that had grace that wasn't seeing no finances. But Acts chapter 4 said great grace. See, this is greater than the grace that everyone else had. My God. See, and that's why you can't despise someone that got greater grace than you. Because they come to help you to get up to a grace that you didn't even know existed. Or a grace that you always dreamed about walking in. Because the great grace is a level where the ability of God is strong. And stronger than just grace. Now let's deal with this. Jesus said these works I do. You'll do also. Wait a daggone minute. Jesus you can't say something like that. Uh, and, and, and make us go, not go wild. Because if you just said these works that I do. You gonna do also. So. Let me look at your works, Jesus. One of your works was pitting money in a, in a fish mouth, supernatural money. So I got the power to work what you worked. One of those works was to forgive. I have that power to work your works. One of those powers, those works, was the work of raising people from the dead. I have the power to work those works. Watch this. Some of you all say, well, I never rose nobody from the dead yet. Use a daggone lie. Have you ever encouraged somebody? Have you ever coached somebody into excellence? 
Have you ever boosted someone's soul? You raised them from the dead. Have you ever made somebody praise God? You raised them from the dead. The Bible said the dead don't praise the Lord. The dead don't praise the Lord. So when people are dead, they don't praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The, 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 the Holy Spirit got to be inside of you for you to enter into levels of praising God. See, because no, no demon like to praise God for long. <laughs> you see, sometimes there'll be a demon in the pew. Hallelujah. It might be a demon in the pew, but they can't do that for long. Oh, my carapa so romo. Oh! Glory to God. Do you know what God going to do for you this week? Glory to God. That's how I came out. See, see, the Bible said the poor man cried out. The Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. No, the prophet Joshua Holmes cried out. The Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. Pitch yourself in the text. Oh, just praise him a little bit. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm full of revelation. Just praise him a little bit. Glory to God. <laughs> We're not waiting for you to do nothing, King Jesus. You already did everything. We're not waiting. We're not, we not praising you for what you're about to do. We praise you because you are the it already is done. See, the Lord, he got another name. It's already done. See, you got to get a revelation of his name like that. The Lord Jesus got another name. It is called, it is finished. See, he released it at the cross. This fresh, man. This fresh. Jesus was laying, you know, one of his secretive names. Remember, what's the last things that he said at the cross? It is finished. What well, he was telling you, this is my name. This is my identity. This is what I'm releasing to you. You got to know that this is part of my title. This is part of my functionality. This is a part of my assignment, part of my ministry, part of my flow, part of my stream, part of my, part of my, part of my, this, this, this part of how I operate, it is finished. This is how I, I move. This is how I live. This is how I produce your being. This is how I make miracles happen because it is finished. This is how I make money show up. This is how I multiply the five loaves and two fish. This is how I take you out of the valley and put you in the high place. This is how I exalt you. This is how I put promotion on you. This is how I heal your body. This is how I set your soul free. This is how I give you joy. This is how I give you the supernatural power. It is finished. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. See, at the cross, he was releasing to you another name. It is finished. He was letting you know one of his secretive names. See, so this is one of his secretive names. It is finished. See, for now on, when you call on the name of King Jesus, remember his nickname. It is finished. Oh, my God. This will remove your stress. Your worry. Your negativity. It is finished. See. See. What did the Bible say Jesus was? The author and the finisher. 
the finisher. This is his nickname, the finisher. See, I, I, I'm, I'm saying something real apostolic and prophetic to you. I'm revealing apostolic mysteries to you that you've been reading the word and haven't been catching his name. See, he said that he's the author. So he constantly writing books about your life. Okay, I'm going to make sure that she get healed from this high blood pressure. Okay, I'm going to make sure that he come out of this cancer. Okay, I'm going to make sure she come out of this depression. Okay, I'm going to make sure he come out of this pride. Okay, I'm going to make sure she come out of this curse. Okay, I'm going to make sure he come out of this witchcraft. Because he's the author. What do authors do? Write books. And see, the books, see, see, you, you know about the book of life. But see, in the book of life, there's books that God wrote about you for you to even accomplish the book of life. See, for you to live in the book of life, there's other books that you got to receive. See, there's a book for your tongues. See, this fresh, this fresh. You might hate me, but I got the tea. <laughs> you might hate me, you might not like me, but I got the word of God inside of me. I got I got supernatural mantles that, that many don't never will see a day in their life. I got it inside of me. You might not like me, but but you can't debate the wisdom that flow from this vessel. You can't you you might say what you want, but you can't debate the freshness of God inside of me. You can't debate the words of the Lord, the living God. Inside, oh my God, you you can't you can't debate. There's books that you gotta receive before the book of life can manifest in your life. So so watch this, son. Watch this, daughter. You gotta receive the book of tongues because the Bible talk about how. Pray all prayer in the spirit. You got to receive the book of tongues because there's a higher level of wisdom. There's a higher level of knowledge. And this knowledge is stored up for tongue talkers. And I'm not just saying just babbling something off your mouth to sound good. I'm talking about when you praying in the spirit, you got the revelation that mysteries are being revealed to you of decisions, of vocabulary, of thoughts, of emotions, of finances, of health, of direction that you're supposed to walk in daily, constantly. So watch this here. Um, Jesus said something real powerful. He said, you shall speak in new tongues. These new tongues have new instructions, new anointings, new finances, new behavior, new conduct, new attitudes, new health, new connections, new strength, new joy. It has new faith in it. See, what, 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 here, what I'm teaching you right now, I'm teaching you the glory realm and how to manifest it, how to walk in it, activate it, live in it constantly. See, when you get to the book of tongues, then angels going to join in with you while you in this book, because there's an angel that governs this book of tongues. And that's why Apostle Paul knew this angel. He said, if I speak in the tongues of angels. Because he knew this tongues. The tongues of angels. These, there's an angel that is governing this book of tongues. So when Jesus said, you shall speak in new tongues, Jesus was releasing the angel upon the apostles. And that's why in the book of Acts, the Bible said when the Holy Ghost fell, and I think it was Acts chapter 2 that they begin to speak in tongues of fire. Because Jesus was releasing the new wave of tongues on them. 
You think the angel Fuego wasn't there? The angel Fuego was right there. Why they was praying in tongues? Ma caraba so remate ke repe so ramante carama ranta corre be caranta pa repe so ramante carre de rondo rante mante carama randa morre be caranta parama rosto corre pe carre pe rondo corre pe kiropo ronto porre macara rapa so ramante ke ribi so ramando ro rondo rande mande ka Rande mor remande ros, risto rosso correte, ribe rundo rande mande rando randa manda karama. While they was praying, they was receiving mantles to go by that gate. And heal that man that was lame. While they was praying, they was receiving mantles that when the government would oppose them, they would be able to stand up for the name of Jesus. Peter wasn't going to deny Jesus no more because he had done filled himself with his most holy faith because he was praying in these new tongues. Didn't the Bible say that they was praying for Peter while he was in jail? Now, obviously, watch this. This was Peter's members, his flock, his sheep, that he was mentoring. Don't think for one minute that they wasn't praying in tongues. That's why the angel came. See, see what I'm doing right now is I'm activating you into spiritual things. You're receiving an impartation from me right now. As you're watching me, you're receiving a hunger, an appetite. That means that your spirit is at work. Your soul is learning and your flesh got to shut up, shut up. See, when you deal with your flesh, you shout, 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 get out of the way, shout, shout. Your soul is learning, but your spirit is in control. But your flesh, you got to shout, 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 and get your soul back into being a student and let your spirit be God. Because your spirit is connected to Jesus fully. Your spirit, ah, your, ah, your, your spirit don't got no insufficiencies, no deficiencies, no infirmities of any kind. It don't got no curse, no serpent, no Satan of any kind inside of your spirit. So you tell your flesh, shout, shout. You get your soul into being a student and you get your spirit into being God. Come on, spirit. So repe sorra mande, rando rosto correbe, repe sorro to. See, now your soul is learning. Your soul is used to adapting to your flesh. Your soul is used to obeying your flesh because the flesh was its master. Your flesh is Satan that speaks to the soul and makes the soul hate the spirit. But your spirit is God that speaks to your soul. And make your flesh sit down. Make your soul hate the flesh. So when Jesus said, you shall speak in new tongues. You shall speak in new tongues. Jesus is saying, I'm about to give you new strategies. I'm about to give you new insight. I'm going to give you new wisdom. I'm going to give you new mindsets. New joy, new discernment, new discretion, new submission, new surrender, new attentiveness, new prudence, new impartations, new angelic ministry, new abilities to praise me, new thanksgiving, new songs, new seeds. New sowing, new reaping, new deliverance, new liberty, new boldness, new boldness, new boldness, new boldness. Proverbs 28 verse 1 said the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. See, Daniel was inside there, but he had already prayed. He had already prayed. So when he got inside the lion's den, he was bold as a lion. 
So, so the, they had their, their, their teeth gnashing. He was gnashing his teeth too. Uh, you, you are lying, but I'm a lion too. Let's see which lion going to win. The angel came down and shut all the mouths of every single lion because he in the spirit realm. Those angels got a book over Daniel's life. Those angels got a book over Daniel's life. So you imagine. Daniel is flowing from the spirit realm. Daniel is flowing from the angelic realm. And it's shutting down everything that's not the will of God on the earth for him. This is what happens when you step into your spiritual function. You shut down everything on earth that is not of him. You bring the kingdom of God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. Where? On earth. Where? On earth. Where? On earth. As it is. Where? In heaven. But see, you stepping into the realm of the author. Because if his kingdom come, his will be done. He's the author of his kingdom. He's the author of his will. So if his kingdom come and his will be done, now you just stepped into the author realm of Jesus and you get to know him as the author. If you continue with him, you get to know him as the finisher. You notice I said if. Because many are called and few are chosen. You can't finish if you're not chosen. Only chosen vessels finish. So watch this here. The author realm does not promise the finisher realm will manifest. If you submit to the author realm, you'll receive the reward of the finisher. Let me say this, sons and daughters. A lot of people don't know Jesus as a finisher. And you'll never know him as a finisher if you're not. Hallelujah. Moving along. The finisher realm will not manifest in a hypocrite's life. You reap the finisher after you sow finishing. And you cannot finish Unless Jesus' name at the cross, his nickname at the cross is upon you, it is finished. Which means you can't even be a finisher until you go to the cross and you deny yourself and you take up your cross and you follow him. If you don't go to the cross, you can never receive his nickname. It is finished. And you'll never finish assignments. And you'll never know him as the finisher. Because the realm of the finisher is locked up in you finishing. Because you done yielded yourself to it is finished. His name at the cross. Saints, I promise to the Lord, I feel fire on me right now. And I promise to the Lord as I stand in the presence of Jesus, the Son of God, and seraphims and cherubims and living creatures. As I stand before the Lord, I promise you that what I'm teaching you right here is fresh and never before preached information and revelation. Because my angel Arrhenius is handing me scrolls as I'm talking right now. As I'm talking right now. My angel Arrhenius is handing me scrolls and allowing me to teach off of the freshness of what I'm eating. And I'm moving so fast in the spirit right now. 
If you smart, you won't watch my broadcast one time. You'll watch them constantly. If you let my words become living, a part of your living, you won't look for me to go live. You'll catch that later. If you let the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. If you let them become a part of your living, you won't even need me to go live. Remember what Jesus said? Y'all see me, but blessed is those that believe and have not seen. What was Jesus saying? They, 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 they are at a bigger empowerment. <sighs> Do you catch that? For Jesus to say blessed, you know what bless mean? Empower. You're empowered by the spirit. You and the anointing is empowering you. You you empowered to prosper and be successful. So imagine Jesus was saying they're going to have a stronger anointing on them. Because they believe and they don't got all the videos you got. They don't got all the visuals you got. I'm just showing you how when you step into another level, you don't need to be babied no more. When you step into the glory realm of God, you take your diapers off. Oh my God. You take your, your, your pacifier out. Oh my God. You refuse the milk. No, I don't want no more milk. Saints, I was studying Zendaya. When Zendaya was a baby, she, you give her the milk, she'll take it. But Zendaya has times, as I stand in the presence of God, where if she's being offered the milk, she say, mm. And saints, because I'm such a wise thinker, I consider the thing. She's outgrowing the milk. Oh, my God. Saints, some of you all are connected to me because you outgrew the milk. No, we praise God for everyone that has deposited something. We praise God. Even, you know, people of your past, you may, God, this, but you praise God for everything that was deposited. But milk, not enough for me, baby. Not where I'm going, this heavy stuff that I'm carrying from God, this heavy, this heavy uh, 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 material that I'm carrying from God, this heavy anointing that I got on my life. You might not respect it and see it, but it's heavy, it's strong. I, I need something to sustain it, and this milk ain't going to do. And, and watch this, saints. When you outgrow milk, you got to catch this. That at one time the milk was satisfying to you. But I'm going to show you this, saints. I'm going to show you this. And this is real powerful. And I'm in my wisdom anointed. Zendaya have seen other foods. So... The fact that she been exposed. That there's something bigger and better out there. <laughs> there are some times that the milk seems. Hey, no, nah, I, I, I don't want no milk. <laughs> Shoot, I don't want no milk. You... See. The bar 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 barbecue business, the bar 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 barbecue business. See, see, are you understanding me? See, there's a time where the milk seems like it's the bomb to you. 
but the milk of the word. But when you get a revelation that Jesus got heavier glory, uh, uh, he got heavier glory. He got heavy anointing. He got heavier grace. He got heavier power. He got heavier realms. He got heavier. Huh? He got heavier uh, 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 dispensations and heavier mantles and heavier encounters and heavier finances and heavier money cometh and heavier health. You start rejecting the old. You start embracing the new. The Lord will give you an appetite for me. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Hey, as you're listening to me, the Holy Ghost just told me he's making you drunk. <laughs> he, he said, he said, he said, as they're listening to you. I'm intoxicating them with my spirit. I'm doing a supernatural surgery. I'm giving them laughing gas. Laughter do it good like a medicine. He intoxicating you on the line. He intoxicating you on the line. He making you drunk in the spirit. <laughs> Listen, what am I doing? I ain't laying no hands on you. I'm on this line talking to you. My words are full of the Holy Ghost. My, my vocabulary is full of the Holy Ghost. My mouth is full of wine and oil. We, we pop in bottles. You are new wine skin. I'm giving you new wine. See, you are new wine skin. I'm giving you new wine. See, when you get drunk with the spirit, the demon of worry get afraid of you. Because watch this. The reason why you got worried because you wasn't drunk. The reason why you got stressed out because you wasn't drunk. What do people do in the natural when they're trying to run from their problems in life? They go drink. They don't want to feel that way, so they go drink. No, no, moko steples tios estula ston ti os tuntus me estula makan steples steples tu luns tu tu lobus mil estula mas steples te. The Holy Ghost said, "I got a wine that's greater than any wine that Satan will counterfeit. I got a supernatural intoxication that's greater than any intoxication that Satan will bootleg. I'll take you to realms of highness." I'll take you to realms of drunkenness that will elevate you and benefit you and, and edify you so that you'll become a superman and a superwoman for me. The tongues and interpretation. Ho! Oh, it's poor. Money! Comment to me now. Let's open up that book. There's a book for money cometh. All your money in that book. All that you're supposed to have is in that book. Your inheritance is in that book. You don't got a scheme, trick, and labor to be rich. Because you got a book. And, and, and watch this. Jesus died. He left his will. And he put your name in the will. Jesus died. He left his will. And he put your blessed be God name inside of that will. Your name in that will. Girl, your name in that will, man. Do you understand? So make a repeat. So do you understand your name in that will? So 
All you just got to do is follow the will of God. And that will going to manifest. He got a book for money. Your name in that will. Your name in that book. He wrote your name down. To have prosperity favor. To have prosperity abundance. To have prosperity and increase. Why would David pray a prayer? Oh Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Why would he pray a prayer like that? David, you disrespecting God? Hey, didn't, didn't the Bible talk about the spirit of man? Didn't the Bible say the love of money is the root of all evil? Oh, so David is calling in money and prosperity and, and, and it's not evil. Oh, so there's a realm that is pure. There's a realm that is godly, that is good, that is holy. Holy money, holy wealth, holy riches, holy increase, holy prosperity. Send now prosperity. What is it? I think it's in Psalm 118. Let me clarify. Yeah, there got to be in Psalm 118. By the way, the Lord just told me, he said, son, the reason why I'm having you release these mantles on the line is because today, today is the 21st. And you know, hereby, the apostolic mystery that was given to me, the prophetic secret that was given to me, and I, I released it to you, which the Lord Jesus gave to me. And as he has revealed this day to you, you know the justice and the judgment that takes place on this day. You know how the angel goes out. The Holy Spirit said, I have a summary of your life. That has come before me. Flesh de blues dianta, ne replesh de te flesh to flur of sile. And in my mercy, I'll respond and reward you. In my mercy. In my mercy. Look at look at uh, Psalm chapter 118. I praise you, King Jesus. I glorify you for you are the only true and living God. I'm a God underneath you. You are the true and living God. I praise you that it, it, it has been given unto me and, and those that you have chosen to bear the uh, the recompense of your mercy. Bear the reward of your loving kindness. Say this, I wear the crown of your loving kindness with great joy, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll wear the crown of your loving kindness with great joy and great honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Man, I feel, man, it's crazy. You know how I'm in another realm? I feel my ears popping. You know, like when you're in a flight? Even my physical body is another atmosphere. See, see, we wasn't created to live on the earth. We was created to live in heaven full time. You grace the earth with your heavenly presence. Saints, you know when you're flying in a flight and your air popping? That's what's happening to me right now. I'm not in no flight. 
How your ear popping? You in, you in the same atmosphere? No, you in another atmosphere. God will sit on you when you're praising Him. He, yeah, he is enthroned in the praises of His people. You can't praise God and He not sit on you. He go. There's there's ministries that are birthed out of the praising lips. There's mantles. That start to flow. Learn how to praise God. Learn how to praise him. Don't become no conditional praiser. That, a, a conditional praiser will become Lucifer eventually. A conditional praiser will become Lucifer eventually. When you are a real praiser. You stir up. The gift of God within you. This is a strong broadcast. This is a strong broadcast. There's a strong broadcast. Ah, there's a this is a strong broadcast. It's strong. The anointing, the glory strong, the fire of God strong, the power of God strong, angels moving strong. This week is a strong week. Ah, it, it, ah, this week is birth on the 21st because this week God doing a new thing. He doing a fresh thing. He doing a powerful thing. He breaking yokes. He destroying yokes. He removing burdens. He breaking all principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this age and the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. He releasing a fresh anointing, a fresh move of God, a fresh wave, a fresh act, a fresh a fresh grace, a fresh power, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. This a fresh week is starting off on the twenty first because it's a fresh week. I do a new thing. It's a fresh anointing. It's starting off on the 21st because the Lord releasing a fresh anointing. The spirit might have been sitting on you all these years and all these days. But in the name of Jesus, that spirit got to go right now. That spirit got to go right now. That spirit got to go. Every demon that been attached to you, that been assigned to you, I stand as an apostle and prophet of Jesus Christ and I speak to that spirit and I say, you know who I am in the name of Jesus out. I lose angels. I lose angels to minister to you. I lose angels. I lose angels. Angels of God. Ministering spirits. I lose them in your path right now. I call in a turnaround right now. I call in a supernatural intervention from the Father Almighty right now. Right now, I call it in by the power of the Holy Ghost. You going to finish strong these final quarters of this year. You're going to move heavy. These final quarters of this year, you're going to move heavy. You hear me? You're going to move heavy. This is the strongest you've ever been in the spirit. Ever a day in your life. I'm not talking about no actual feeling. Because feelings are deceptive. I'm talking about knowledge. I'm talking about rank. I'm talking about uh, uh, favor. And grace. See oftentimes You look at how strong you are by feelings. These feelings are liars. Jesus is at the highest place of his life. And he feel like telling the cup. No I don't want it. Jesus is at the highest place in his life. You don't go by feelings. Feelings is a false prophet. Feelings is a false prophet.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed are you if you're born in this dispensation. Blessed are you. There's many prophets, apostles, wish they could experience this realm with Jesus. But unto you it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord God Almighty forevermore. Worthy is the Lamb to receive glory, honor, power, and blessings and riches forevermore. We serve the true and living Jesus that reigns with all power and glory, that is returning back to the earth with all his grace and all his angels. And he shall do war and make it war with those that are not of his spirit and not of his kingdom. And he shall prevail and he shall move us into the new life, the new heaven, the new earth. I hope President Trump run for this second term because if he don't run, it's going to be dangerous. Extremely dangerous. I know the Lord told me there's supposed to be eight years of righteousness. You notice 2020. You see the portal? 2020. Second Chronicles 2020. You believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. Man, I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. And then watch. After 2020 is the year 2021. What you think going to happen that year? Justice and judgment. Now, 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 some of y'all, you might be listening to me. You might got a little crafty heart. Well, well, I just wait to surrender to the Lord in 2020 or 2021. Let me tell you something. You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm going to be real raw with you. This might step on some toes. You might, you might get stopped by a cop. You know how I many people I've seen get stopped by a cop and got killed? They didn't, now, listen. You don't know what's going to transpire in a day. So some people say, you know, I'll wait, I'll wait until a certain time to, 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 to surrender. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's why Jesus will put a prophet in your life to make it easy. For you to surrender your life to Jesus. Because the prophet is a no chaser. They're going to tell you what it is. They're not fake. They're not no... See, people got... Listen, my generation got mad at me because I'm not corny. I'm not going to act like every other preacher. I'm not going to follow what everybody else is doing. I'm not going to think like everybody else. I'm going to be who Jesus want me to be. And that's always going to be the same way. When you are real, that's who the Lord want to work with. See, uh, being fake got its consequences. Because then the Lord, the Lord don't want to talk with you. Because he, he know, he know you fake. <laughs> he want, listen, the Lord will work with somebody that have killed 50 people and real with him. Then somebody that grew up in a Catholic church wearing a long skirt, a veil over your head. You ain't never been with nobody all your life. You never drunk. You never smoked. The Lord will pass you by and go find the person that killed 50 people and say, come on, you my, you, you, you my, you my, ah! you, you my, yeah, come on, come on, come on with me. Come on, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use them because they know too much. If I tell them this, oh no, that's that goes against what I know. Yeah, sit down. Uh, bro, come on, come on, come on. Let me let me take you. Let me take you with me because you done been through some stuff. You done been through all type of uh, issues and all type of stuff. Your your soul is hungry. Your your soul is hungry. Your soul hungry for me. 
they lukewarm. They think that they done lived a good life. So so they they, they so yeah, then them the ones that I ain't I ain't got nothing to do with. Them ain't the ones that I ain't I that's why I ain't using them. I'ma pick somebody right here that's crazy, that's that's wild for me, that got a zeal, that give me passion. See, that's why Jesus, he know who to recruit. Sometimes he recruits you because he look he look at he look at certain stuff. Yeah. Look at certain stuff. And that stuff, if it's going to bring you into passionately serving God and pursuing God, that's why he picked you. Look at Psalm 118, verse 25. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Now, saints, this is one of the books that God released to your life. One of the books that God released to your life is money coming, prosperity. That's why David is saying, send now prosperity. David is activating these prosperity angels. David is activating God's biggest wish, which is that you are prosper and being health even as your soul prospers. You see this? David is activating the supernatural right now. Now, saints, I want you to see this. David know that he is a Jacob in an Esau generation. So he know that he got rights for this. I want you to see this. He know that he a Jacob in an Esau generation. So he's saying, Lord, send out prosperity. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you this. David is talking with such authority because his sowing has directed him into Godship. His honor uh, towards the Lord has directed him into Godship. So it has permeated his vocabulary, his uh, verbal approach. You like that? You understand? It permeated his vocabulary and his verbal approach. So now he's talking from authority and dominion. And watch this. He's not disrespecting God because God has led him into this realm. See, God's biggest wish is that you prosper. God's biggest motive is for you to be his twin. You, you caught that? God's biggest wish is for you to prosper. God's biggest motive is for you to be his twin. If, if you're not his twin and you see someone twinning with God, you're going to think that they're sinning against God. You caught that? You caught that? Did you catch that? I said, if you not God's twin and you see someone twinning with God, you're going to think that they sinning against God. Because in the twin realm, the Lord is actually training me to talk with his same boldness. His same demand, his same command, his same uh, dominion, his same uh, charge, and it brings him pleasure. This is glorious. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing? 
Isn't this amazing? This, the Lord enjoys that. It makes him happy. When he see that you will permit him to be the God over your functionality and he sees you start acting like him. The Lord in his motive, his intent was to create twins on the earth. Why did God's wrath send a flood? Why is he so angry? Because his twin plan has been interrupted with the sin man. Who does he kick out the garden? The sin man. Because it interrupted and corrupted the twin plan. So watch what Jesus comes on the scene. And to as many as receive him, John 1, 12, he gave unto them power to become the sons of God. Here go the twin plan. And Jesus destroyed the sin man. The twin plan destroys the sin man. Man, I, I'm, I'm preaching. No, no, moko shte pleste kurama. How long I've been on here? How long I've been on here? Uh, man, I'm, I'm giving you classified, fresh, deep wisdom from the throne of God. Don't ask me how I'm doing. I'm doing wisdom. People tell us, how you doing? Probably. This how I'm doing. I'm doing the glory realm. Ah! Look, that's 21 backwards. Y'all see that? That's 21 backwards. How many of y'all catch that? That's 21 backwards. You catch that? Let's pull. Money! be on fire for somebody why not be on fire for Jesus you gotta be crazy for someone people up there crazy for the devil do anything the devil tell them to do well we crazy for Jesus we, we, watch this uh, we crazy about Jesus see see we fix it Devil tell people, you a woman, go with another woman. They do it. You a man, like another man, they do it. Yeah. So, so up in here, up in here, we going to be radical, walking in the love of God and receiving the love of God for our life. And we're going to experience living in the glory and living in the spirit realm. People up there smoking a tree. They don't legalize people smoking a tree. Legalized talking about it calm people down is for medical reasons. Smoking grass that God created. And there's some people call themselves believers. Oh, you know, it's all right. It's normal. It's natural. You know, it calm us. Yeah. We're going to see how many trees you're going to be smoking in hell. If it was normal, and we're going to see how many trees you're going to be smoking in hell. Here's what I'm saying. If you want to live like that, fine. 
Because let me tell you something. I haven't I haven't come to force you to change how, how you want to live. If you want to live like that, fine. But what I'm saying is the same way people could be bold to live for what's going to take them to hell, we'll be bold for what will create heaven on earth for us and cause us to experience heaven for all eternity. Let me, let me just say this. I've experienced a lot of people, so I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to force nobody to change. You understand? If you believe what you believe, believe it. You got that right. Whatever you believe, believe what you believe. But let me say this. The truth is not an opinion. It's not a feeling. And it's not cultural. The truth is Jesus himself. And if we don't adapt to Jesus with our life, we go going to hell. Now, let me fix that. Not we. You go into hell. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I, I, I know how to bow down. I know how to worship. I know how to lay down. I know how to, to pit my face to the floor and let Jesus uh, walk on me and rule me. I know how to do it. You go into hell. Look at, let's, let's look at this. Psalm 118. Let's go to verse 20. Or let's go to verse 18. Praise God. We give you glory, Lord. I pray that none of you all choose hell. That's my earnest, that's my earnest desire. There's no other reason why I come before you every day preaching heavily to you and giving you profound wisdom. I do this for you all day, every day. There's no amount of money that you can pay me that could equal the level of uh, impartation and sacrifice that I'm giving for you. There's no level of money that you can give unto me. I have to sacrifice spending time with my children to do what Jesus has called me to do. You understand? I'm living in Mark chapter 10, verse 30. A lot of people won't understand it. Oh, well, 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 how, how is that biblical? The Bible said that uh, if you leave houses and lands and brothers and sisters and wives and mothers and fathers and children for my sake, for my sake, when you serve in the Lord, you're going to have to put your children to the side sometimes. And some of y'all don't like that. Oh, I can't do that. Well, guess what? You're going to hell. If Jesus not going to be number one, you can't live in a place where he number one. I, I don't get what our generation don't understand about that. If you're not going to pick him number one right now, how in the heezy for sheezy, believe me, I'm the prophet. <laughs> Why would he let your big head self in heaven for you to pick? You going to pick flowers in front of him. The Lord going to be calling you to a throne. Come down to the throne. No, I got to water my grass today. I got to water my grass today. I'm coming. I'm not going to let my grass get messed up. He, I'm coming. Did I say I'm coming? The angel going to be like, you're you going to get out of here today. You're going to get out of here today. You done came back. You, you going to get out of here today. Sure, yeah, think that, think that I'm a player, man. I'm an angel, man. I ain't go. Oh, ah, yeah. Woo. You, you's a crazy one, right? But you gonna get it. Ah, today. Grab me. I got my hair all messed up. I got an angelic hair appointment tomorrow. I'll get it fixed. Don't worry. I'll be ready for this banquet that Jesus having. I'll be ready. Tell Jesus I'm gonna be all right. I'm about to eat a couple leaves <laughs> for the healing of the nations. I'll be good. Huh? I'm about to eat some of these, these leaves. I'll be good. I'm... Nah, nah. I don't need to go on no leave. I'm gonna eat some leaves. 
It's a privilege to know Jesus. If you're not going to pin him first down here, why would he let you into heaven? you going to hell, baby. If he's not number one down here, You're not, you're not going, you, you're not having material. Because he number one up there. He demand his number oneness up there. So you ain't going to be up, someone up there telling them, well, um, I, I want to go look at the heaven museum today. I want to see the fish. I want to see the fishes today. I want to see some zebras in heaven. Jesus called you to his throne. I, I'm coming. I'll be there later on. I'm going to go see some fishes. You, you's about to get out of here. <laughs> Betty Crocker. You about to get out of here, Betty Crocker, today. You going to learn today. <laughs> you going to see some fishes all right. You going to see all the fish in hell that refuse the gospel. That's what you going to see. <laughs> you you want to see some fish? We going to take you down. All the filthy fish in the filthy fish. We're going to take you down there. And y'all know what the filter fish is. Stop. Don't think about it. We're going to take you down there with all them shims and hymns. And you're going to be down right there. with You're going to be able to see fish all the time. <laughs> you're going to get to see all type of fish that you want to see. See, sons and daughters, you got to make Jesus first now. You got to make them first now. Listen, you, you know what crazy what the devil does? When you follow in your man of God, they say, oh, well, you pin your man of God before the Lord. This is the one person on the earth that's telling me profound, edifying things and wisdom that I need to know about the Lord. So because I love the Lord, I love to hear where the Lord is being preached to me. You see how that little sly fox do? Oh, you, you, you pitting your, you exalting your man of God before the Lord. Sicilies, my man of God exalting the Lord in front of my face. I want to be around somebody instead of your big head self that's going to come to me with information that ain't going to get me into eternal life. I want to hear the Lord being preached to me. I want to hear what God has for me. I want to hear what Jesus died for me to experience. I want to know the supernatural lifestyle that's in my DNA. I want to know my real fathers, not no slaves. I want to know the fathers of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The God of the living is over these fathers. You see how that little sly fox do? See, I just killed a demon. If you love the Lord, you're going to want to be around where the Lord is being exalted. And then Jesus told us, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto you. Draw them in unto me. So if Jesus saying, I'll draw them in unto me. And you exalting him out your mouth. They're going to be drawn unto you. Because it's you that's exalting him. My mother brought me this, bought me this bracelet here. It's, it's a Jesus piece uh, uh, bracelet. My mother bought it for me for Mother's Day. Isn't it nice? She bought it for me for Mother's Day. I put it on today to, to, uh, to think about it. See, your gift carries your spirit. Never forget this. Your gift carries your spirit. So when I'm sowing seed unto the Lord, my spirit is with the Lord constantly. You understand? Because my gift is carrying my spirit. It's magnifying me. Are you catching this? So that's why when the woman poured out the alabaster box, Jesus said, for all eternity, forever, wherever the gospel is preached, she shall be honored. Because her alabaster box, her gift, is bringing her 
God that? The Lord said, forever now, I'm going to remember you because of your gift. Your, so, so the Lord was saying, your spirit is with me forever. And I'm going to let your, watch this. I'm going to let your spirit be upon preachers when they preach in my gospel. So they're going to testify of you. Oh, my God. Saints. I just got a revelation from Jesus that I never said a day in my life. This, and some of y'all already catching it because you carry my spirit. The woman with the alabaster box spirit overtake you for you to so lavishly upon Jesus and the gospel and to sponsor his work and to sponsor his messenger and to sponsor his message. The spirit of the woman with the alabaster box be overtaking you to soul. And watch this, her spirit so mighty because she sold that her spirit is upon preachers when they're talking about the gospel. Her spirit sit on preachers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's powerful stuff that I'm teaching here. You know, I've sown a lot of phones. And bought a lot of people phones in my lifetime. I paid for a lot of people phones in my lifetime. You know, I received a harvest here. Uh, Cindy Cunningham bought me, uh, bought me a nice behind Verizon phone. Man, it phone nice. Cindy Cunningham been following me for years now. And, and what I like about Cindy, 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 watch this. Cindy, my, 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 uh, Cindy is my white angel. <laughs> I'm going to say it like that. Because cause people that uh, minister to your life are angels. She my white angel, and there's a lot of black people that tried to talk to her, that would link up with her, and she ain't listen to none of them. And Cindy, not disrespectful at all, but she, you're not going to make my soul go to hell for you. I, that's what I love about Cindy. I honor Cindy. And I, I pray that the blood of Jesus will continue prevailing in Cindy's life and, and work out everything concerning her uh, and whatever she desire. Because what Cindy did was, it didn't matter if they was black or not, they, or they tried to come talk to her. She didn't, uh uh. Screw. Been with me for years. Look at this phone. Look, look at the gold. I just like it like that. It's just gold. Look, they look, they look like heavenly. Just gold. You didn't switch colors. 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 Ooh, that was nice. Then switch colors. Then switch colors again. It did it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Then it switch colors. I'm going to do it. Then bam, back to that gold. You honor your man of God and you treat your man of God right? Jesus loved that. Oh man, Jesus, Jesus. You, you you know how close people are that treat their man of God right? When you treat your man of God right, you're treating God right. Remember even Jesus said, you give me a cup of cold water, all this stuff. They say, when I gave you a cup of cold water, when you did it for the least of these. Now if Jesus was talking about the least of these, how much more the greatest of these? The man of God. Oh, it's beautiful. I know when I have gotten around any man of God, I wanted them to have the best, drive the best. I wanted them to be far from stress. There's not a man of God that could ever say that they got around me and I stressed them out. Not one man of God could ever say that. If I've been in their presence, then I stressed them out. No, I bring joy. I bring laughter. 
I want the man of God to be happy. I want the man of God to... <laughs> I can't say some of the stuff that, <laughs> that I want to say on that because I'm live today. <laughs> let me let me put my glasses back on. Sight! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> if the man of God happy, I'm happy. I mind my own business. If, 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 watch this here. If it's not affecting how he feed me and the food coming out good and it tastes real good and the food is all that in the bag of chips, well, listen, something great is happening to the man of God. Uh, uh, Prophet Joshua, do you hear? No, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. What I heard was a word that came from God that shook my soul and made me feel great adocious. I ain't hear nothing. I, I, no, I ain't got time for it. I don't got, shout, shout. I said shout. I, I, I feel the anointing of joy on me. That's why I'm acting like this. You imagine Jesus. Jesus had times where he was frustrated. What y'all seeking after me? You just want the miracle of the loaves? Then other times Jesus tells him, ask what you will. <laughs> I'll do it unto thee. <laughs> Hey, hey, do you know that Jesus laughing right now because he have a good time with Prophet Joshua Holmes. Jesus love me, I promise you. He liked me. He enjoyed me. Saints, there's some preachers, he about to go over to the house and say, let's go over here by Prophet Joshua Holmes. Let's, let's, let's spend the night with him. <laughs> Jesus actually helped me pity like that. I couldn't, I couldn't discover that. It take a wisdom anointing to discover that just now. For your mind to think like that. I, I couldn't discover that. He gave that to me and he having a good laugh right now. The angel's having a good laugh. <laughs> you see Jesus in other places. Tell that fox. That I'm doing miracles. I dot, 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 and I'm about to be raised on the third day. Go inside there. Get, 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 get this stuff off of here. Throwing stuff. And then Jesus comes saying, hey. I am the way, the truth, the life. He that believe in me. <laughs> hey, you want to believe? I saw you believing. He that believe in me shall not perish, but you're going to have everlasting life. <laughs> John 14, 14. Ask what you will. I'll do it unto thee. Whatever you will. Whatever you will, I'll do it. Whatever you ask in my name, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it for you. You see the frustrated Jesus, you, feel, you see the happy Jesus. So, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> So when Jesus come out, when Jesus come out all happy, <laughs> Psalm chapter one eighteen. Moving along. Look at verse eighteen. The Lord has chastened me. But he has not given me over unto death. Now look at this, saints. He's saying the Lord has chastened me. 
sore. That's a beat down from Jesus. You caught that? That's a beat down. He said he chastened me sore. That's a deep one. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But he has not given. <laughs> he has not given me over to death. Now, look at this here. Look at verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. Why is David like this? Because he chose it. Bastards. Bastards run from chastening. Is a bastard spirit. See, every, every child of God, you're going to go through a chastening. And, and that's going to let you see who you are, whether you're a child of God or a bastard. Look what he said. The Lord has chastened me. Now, watch what he say now. Open unto me the gates of righteousness. Open unto me the way that God wants me to do things. Are you catching this, children? It's saying, open unto me the way that God does want it done. And watch what he said. I will go into them, meaning I'm going to be quick to repent, change, get it right. And watch this. And I will praise the Lord. What he's saying is, I'm not just going to get it right, but I'm going to do it with celebration. See, if you are a bastard, you can't do this. Hebrews talked about bastards. They're without chastening, meaning they haven't been through nothing with the Lord. The Lord never rebuked them. The Lord never, they never been through nothing with the Lord. They just lived their life and they experienced stuff happened to them in their life. And that's their life. But when you come over to the Lord and then the Lord start rebuking and chastening. See, I'm showing you, David is being chastened by God. And David is becoming more passionate for the Lord than he was even before. Because he is chosen. If he's a bastard, this is not going to be his option. If he's a bastard, he can't correct it and he can't do it with the right spirit. See, David not only said, I'm going to walk through the gates, but he said, and I will praise you. What is David saying? I'm going to celebrate you and do it with zeal and do it with joy and do it with happiness. I'm not just going to enter through the gates, but I'm going to enter through the gates with the right spirit. You're going to enjoy me entering through the gates. It's not going to be a burden. It's not, I'm not going to do it like I'm being dragged. I'm going to step into the gates with excitement because I'm so happy to be in your presence, Lord. 
because he's not a bastard. Correction makes bastards stumble. That's how you know if you're a bastard spirit. Because you stop doing what the Lord tell you to do if he correct you. See, saints, watch this. Nobody can say Prophet Joshua Holmes is a bastard. You know how? Because watch my fruit. I can have the whole world talk about me like a dog. I'm still laboring for souls. I'm still giving wisdom, profound wisdom, fresh wisdom. And my angel able to flow with me because I'm not a bastard. I know what comes with the territory. I know that betrayal comes with walking the Jesus walk. I know that uh, slander come with walking the Jesus walk. I know that persecution come with walking the Jesus walk. So Jesus not going to get a different me because I am who I am. You see that? But if I'm not who I am, it'll change. If I'm not, if I'm not who I am, and watch this, in the future, you might say, well, listen, um, uh, you know, the reason why I stopped doing that is, it's not that I don't love God anymore. It's just, uh, no, no, no. You don't love God. You see? The situation reveals to you that you don't love God. See, why did Daniel open up his window three times and pray? Or open up his window and pray three times? Because this is who he is. An obedient worshiper of the Lord. So when they pass a law and they do all the stuff and say, you're going to be thrown into lions then if you do it. The situation can't change him from serving the Lord because this is who he is. If he is a fake worshiper, the situation is going to make him shy back and say, oh, no, I ain't going to do this no more because um, I don't want to get thrown into no lion's den and uh, I don't want nobody to talk about me in this kingdom no more. So I'm just going to uh, not do it. The situation reveals you. Children, why do the Lord let you go through some of the stuff that you go through? The stuff that you go through reveals you. And you'll get to see you or whether your heart is pure or whether it is demonic. Whether you have a deceitful heart or a delivered heart. Your situations in life show who you are. Job's situation showed him that he had a wife that was a bozo. His wife told him to curse God and die. She wasn't telling him that when he was feeding her and giving her all the finer things in life. Now his situation comes and... She's telling her, uh, telling him to curse God and die. That, that would have never happened if the situation never came through. If everything was the same way, she would have never spoke those words. But now the Lord is letting a situation hit for him to see. Look at what's in the heart of this woman that you think loves me like you. She doesn't love me. She loves the things that happens for her through what I do, but she does not love me. So now she's telling you to curse me because the things look like it's not going to be coming no more. I'm just using a set scenario. This go for male, female, children, mother, this go for every scenario, but I'm kicking it to you like an apostle. I'm talking, I'm talking from an apostolic stance. I'm showing you how situations reveal where people are. Peter is telling Jesus, I'll die for you. I'll do anything for you. I'll be there for you. Which me, myself, I've heard many people say that to me. You understand? In ministry, especially. But did I believe them? No, the hell. <laughs> Oftentimes, I listen to people say what they say. I just
Peter said, I die for you. I die, 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 die. I do this, I do this. And Jesus said, before the rooster crow, you're going to betray me, deny me three times. Peter denies it. No, 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 I never do that. The situation comes and it reveals Peter's heart to Peter. Now, I promise you, Peter did not know that he had this in him. Because that's why he was saying, no, Lord, I die for you. I do this. But the Lord is showing him the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Now, saints, here's the thing. This could happen to anybody if you don't love the Lord with all your being. Peter denies Jesus three times. Peter, what happened? What happened? Peter, no, not you. Peter, what you doing? The Bible said Peter started cussing just to prove how much he never knew Jesus. He never, ever hung out with Jesus. He never spoke with Jesus. He never worked with Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He don't know who this man is. Who the hell is this man? This man, I don't know him. Peter, not you. But see, I've seen this in my own life. So, so I've seen the Bible come alive. I know what it means to hear somebody say out their mouth, oh, this is the most humblest man ever. And then say, the man full of pride. You've heard people say, oh, I'm not worthy, but he, he treat me like a king. He treat me like a queen. And then with the same mouth, oh, they, they're proud. He a liar. He a devil. I pray for your soul that you find out the truth. What does Prophet Joshua say to all of that? Father, we forgive them niggas. <laughs> Father, as I stand in your presence, I forgive all the niggas. Because the Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So double-minded people, they don't even know how crazy they look. How does one second somebody come from being your savior, your deliverer? They helped me. They brought me out. Oh, they, they did everything to me. Next minute, oh, no, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. Oh, oh, so all that was a lie? So it looked like you the liar. <laughs> it, 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 it don't look like the person the liar because the person still doing what they've been doing all along. They haven't changed. It look like you the lie, because you, you the one. <laughs> Saints, you, I never felt bad for people that say that they got manipulated either. Because if you got manipulated, you claim that you got manipulated, watch this, then why do I want to listen to someone that proved to me that they are a victim to a spirit of manipulation? So if you got manipulated, you claim that, then why do I want to listen to your story now? You might be manipulating me. Because you just proved to me that you don't even got spiritual authority. You See, see, a lot of people don't understand what they be saying. They tell on themselves. Okay, if you is a victim of manipulation, then obviously you so dumb. So why would I want to listen to a dumb spirit that can be manipulated?
You see how you walk in wisdom? I've been manipulated. I've been, oh, I've been manipulated. Oh. So that means that you don't got a relationship with Jesus. Because if you did, it, it's impossible for you to be manipulated. Because Jesus would have told you and you would hurt Jesus. It's impossible for you to be manipulated if you really is in the spirit. Because only dumb people get manipulated. So, so if, if, if you was manipulated and show that you're not even a spiritual person, why would I listen to your manipulated self <laughs> and, and receive truth from your crazy behind that don't even have a spiritual relationship with the creator of the universe to discern good and evil? So, so how are you going to help me discern good and evil? And you can't even do it. I'm showing you how to be wise. You know, because we go, there's years to go, saints. There's years to go. Sometimes you don't catch. Sometimes you don't catch. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. If you were so spiritual and you was around the person, how is it that with one mouth you bless, the next man you curse. So if you's a double-minded person, the Bible told me about people like you. You unstable in all your ways. So how could I receive direction from somebody that all your ways, the Bible just told me, is unstable? And then the person you're talking about is stable. They haven't changed from day one. <laughs> they still doing what they've been doing and they continue to do it 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 and they continue to do it. So um, either they line or you line up. Uh, We pick you. <laughs> now let's go to Psalm 118. See, the Lord wanted to talk about that. See, that's him. I'm just yielding to him. Y'all know me. I really don't get too squats about that. But it is the Lord. The Lord prophesying. He want to talk. So I'm letting him have the right to talk. That's what he want to say. See, you got to know what you're dealing with when you deal with a prophet. A prophet, our mouth is not, it don't even belong to us. Our mouth belongs to Jesus. We've been created to talk and not talk our own words. We've been created to talk the words that God feel like talking about in the moment. If God ever connect you to his prophet, he giving you a chance to handle him, the real Jesus, not the fake Jesus. Some people be in prayer. Also, Jesus, you better come down right now. Jesus, you better come down right now. I call you down, Jesus. You better come down and manifest yourself. <laughs> you, you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> you can't come to a king like that. That's not faith. You can't come to a king like that. Because if he come down, he might, you, you, how you talking to him, them fight words. Them fight words. You, you got to know how to talk to him. He a king. You got to know, you gotta know uh, the protocol. And it's beautiful. I love, I love the Lord's protocol. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful protocol. And it's real satisfying. If you let him give you the protocol, you'll love it. You'll love it. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll become a lover of it for all eternity. You'll love his protocol. I love being ruled by Jesus. There's days where I ask Jesus, says, Jesus, what, what would you like to do today? What you want? What direction would you like to take today? How are you doing today? 
What you want? If you want it, I want it. If you like it, I like it. If you're taking us, write this down. Agreement governs purity. You're taking us, write that down. Agreement governs purity. Agreement governs purity. Remember the Bible said, bless out of pure heart, for they shall see God. So now everybody going to see God. You ever seen like a tornado and people talk, I don't see how God could come down and do this. Agreement governs purity. You can't see God if your heart not pure. I don't see how God could let this happen in the schools. Agreement governs purity. If you're not in agreement with God, you're not pure and you're not going to see him in nothing. I don't believe that God is real. I don't believe that there's a God. Agreement governs purity. If you don't agree that he created everything, you're not going to have a pure heart to see that he created everything. Agreement governs purity. What did the Lord do with Abraham? He was teaching him agreement. Abraham said, Lord, if there be 50 righteous here, would you destroy it? God? God? Let me give my glasses. If there were 50 righteous, I can't believe it. Let me get my glasses. If there were 50 righteous, God, God, would you destroy it? If there were 50 people here, God, would you do it? All merciful, all merciful, God. Would you do it? I can't believe this. God. God. If there were 50, if there were 50 of them, there were 50, five and a zero. Would you destroy 50? God, I can't believe it. By the time the Lord had finished talking to him, the word of God said that Abraham returned to his place. He disrespected God because he disagreed with God. There was no purity. When his agreement steps in, he returns to his place. He said, ah, I understand now. Thank you, Father. I agree. Have your way. Yes, Lord, I understand you. But when there's no agreement, now he's challenging God. The 50 right, let me put my glasses on. I can't believe this. I can't see that this is you for real, Father. If you do, if there are 50 righteous, you're going to destroy them? You mean to tell me you're going to destroy them? Are they going to be all right? Are they going to be all right? <laughs> Tell me, tell me, 50, you going to steal the straw? When agreement comes, the purity manifests in his heart. He returns to his place. He sees how God is in this and knows what he is doing. I'm going to say this to you, and this to create peace. Nothing is happening in your life when you're a spirit-led person that surrendered all to the Lord that is not scheduled. A police can stop you and give you a ticket that you don't want to pay. 
How is God in this? You was about to get on a road where somebody was about to crash into you and kill you. You never saw the crash take place because the police stopped, had you sitting down right there and you had to pull over and you had to wait in that in that parking lot. And while you was waiting in the parking lot, the death angel had to pass you by. There's a lot of stuff that pass you by. That, that you you look at other stuff and say, oh, why, why would God let this happen? Yeah, you don't know what else was about to happen. And God permit this because God's saying, I'm going to stop this. You're not going to take my child out. They're supposed to be here to accomplish my work. I done put grace in them. I done put wisdom in them and glory in them. I'm not going to let you take them out. So I'm going to let devil, you say that you want something to pop off. I'm going to let this pop off. You can only go as far as this. You can't go as far as that. Oh, see, 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 you see how God work. But if your heart not in agreement and your heart not pure, you're not going to see God. You're going to see the ticket that you got to pay. No, I'd rather pay this ticket, blessed be God, and have all my limbs on my body and have the ability to worship the Lord and have a, another opportunity to serve God. Then to get taken out by the devil where this body, God can send my spirit back if he want. Just like he did with Elijah, sent back his spirit on Elisha. Jesus' spirit was sent back on, on the church. And he can do that. But I'd rather take that this body that he done invested in, this face, this appearance will go forth with what had been taught. And accomplish the God assignment for all eternity. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see the bigger picture? You're not going to see that if you're not in the spirit. Now you know why the word of God said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than man. Saints, do you know that sometimes things come my way? And because I'm such a wise king, my wisdom is beyond what you'll ever even comprehend. You just get snippets, snippets of my wisdom. And when stuff go down, I say, I don't got to say a word. When you live in a spirit led life, everything is scheduled by God. Even adversity. My wisdom way higher than anybody will ever know. Some people just see me on videos and see me on videos, dot, 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 you know. Wisdom way higher. This is just snippets of what I carry. It's just snippets. It's way higher. For you to understand the true and living God is the greatest accomplishment that your mind and heart could ever have. To understand. Understanding gives passion to your servanthood. A good understanding gives passion to your servanthood. Your excellence is very powerful. 
is very powerful. And this is what you've been called to walk in. This is what you've been called to demonstrate. This is the beauty of God that allows you to praise and celebrate him forever. Why are the people praising Solomon? The Bible said that they worship Solomon strong words what do they understand God has given me a king so I can see him hear him and obey him with what that king is teaching me with what that king is telling me and watch I'm going to say it like this because a lot of people got wrong perception. The good, the bad, the ugly. If you think what the king is saying is bad, if you think that what the king is saying is ugly, it's still God. That's why the Lord put them over you. It's going to be bad and it's going to be ugly until agreement governs, purity manifests for your mind. If that never occurs, you become your own adversary. You destroy your own eternal life. And you kill your own future with God. The king is going to keep on going. Because the king is anointed. The king is sent. Those of you all that have followed me for years, have you ever seen me? Get on a broadcast for hours, stumbling. Uh, 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 well, uh, well, I, I didn't pray today. Hold on, let me get my glasses. I didn't pray today. We all have our days. I didn't seek his face. I'm going through some things. God have mercy. <laughs> We're not always going to get it right. <laughs> Some days, you're not going to know how to minister. You're not going to know how to get no wisdom. I deny sexual relations with that woman. I, I, there's going to be days with you and you. You're going you to have to go through some things. There gonna be days. There gonna be some days when your delivery, your your words, your 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 wisdom gonna be a little off. But God still love you. You gotta excuse me today. I know that I was on here. I didn't bring a word. Like I'm, I'm gonna get back on there. I'm gonna bring you a word the way I'm supposed to bring you a word. I'm gonna bring you a word the way I'm supposed to bring you a word. And that's a word on the street. We just word up, word to your mama. On oh, word, on oh, gang, on oh, gang, on oh, on oh, on oh, three of them, on oh, three of them. A oh, folk on oh, folk on oh, gang. Folk on oh, folk on oh, gang. Go and bring your word. Watch it. The king there to help you. The king there to deliver you. The king's name is in the book of life. The king is sent to bring you into a Jesus manifesting life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes God would just watch you. You want to know, 
what's up with the king? Is the king, what the king do? The Lord like, you don't need to know none of that. I sent the king to give you what you must know. Don't let the devil trap you into all the snares and knowledges and curiosities that don't have nothing to do with why God put the king in your life. You know, I'll never embarrass people like uh, with what I have, or, uh, what they have said to me. You'll never know who I'm referring to. But I've had people years in ministry that told me, well, uh, I'm only going to follow you if you marry me. Well, blessed be his holy name. I'm going to Taekwondo you before you go. Because what if I did marry you? You just revealed to me that you're a conditional server. If I do marry you, you just told me that your whole allegiance to me is based upon what I do for what you think I should do. So you just proved to me that it's not real connection and love, it's manipulation. And so you might as well just pick your path and go with it now. You forgetting the fact that whether or not I do marry you or not. I'm assigned to your soul, stupid. <laughs> dumb, dumb. You want to be in hell with your big ass self? All that stuff ain't going to matter. You want to burn in hell for all eternity? I don't think that people mind grasp the web that Satan pits man's mind in because he loves to see another soul drop into the pit of hell. He loves to see another soul that has to be separated from God forever. Forever. Saints, you ever thought about it? How long is forever? Forever. How long is forever? You ever thought about it? Forever. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And saints, you fall in a man of God, you fall in somebody that God sent to you, you got to be careful of moments where the serpent come whisper. And all The information is to take you to hell. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God.
Glory to God. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Glory to God. Man, um, it, it's going to be so good seeing some of you all too. Of course. Of course I miss some of you all. I miss you. It's going to be wonderful. I know you miss me. Uh, well, you see me every day. You know, I don't see you. And um, it'll be real glorious. I want you to be with me. Um, October the 4th, the 5th, the 6th. I want you to be with me. Because I miss you. Um, uh, I don't see, I don't see those of you all who, whose life I've changed on a daily basis. You, like you see me. And it's good for you to be acquainted because uh, you imagine for all, e <laughs> all eternity, I mean, you're going to know who I am. It's not like you're just going to be in the dark. Like, saints... Heaven is not a place where it's like you just like gliding and gloating. No, no, no. You see how down here you look at people and say, hey, I know you. Hey, what's up? You remember we went to high school together? No, no, no. Your awareness is going to be way higher. Like you're going to know who people are. Everybody. And like you, you're going to know them for what they did. Hey, your, your paintings. I used to see your paintings in Macy's, <laughs> Dillard's. Like you're going to know people. Hey, cousin, what you doing up here? Did you use to smoke? <laughs> baby, I got free from smoking, baby. You see, you just didn't know. I was listening to your prophet broadcast, and I got free. Eyes delivered. Look at what I live in. I live in this big old place right here. Look at, look at this here. Look at this here. I can't even reach fully. See, the shoes. I can't even reach fully. See, my arms, I can't even wide it up. But this, this is what I'm seeing. I'm not acting like I'm crucified. I'm just showing you I've been glorified. That's what I'm doing. I ain't mocking no daggone body. I'm just showing you this all that. Girl, we used to piss your arms up. I used to pass out. Listen, I don't smell like that no more. I am free. You understand? I smell like Jesus nowadays. I don't smell like none of that reefer or none of that. I'm good. Huh? No, I'm not. You... You ain't understand what I'm talking about. I'm good now. You see? See, what you standing up. You ain't fell out. See? Look at that. Uh-huh. You go. You. Listen. And watch. This is what a lot of people don't know about heaven. When you go to. <laughs> when you. <laughs> When you go to heaven, your personality gonna go to the next level. Like, like if you funny, you gonna be funny, funny, funny. Well, some people are already in the next level already. Some people are already functioning out of their glorified state in their personality. That's why you enjoy them so much. Like my daughter Zendaya, when she when she meets somebody, she just smile at them. And, 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 and it intimidate them. Like I've seen people get intimidated while she looking at them because they like, well, this 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 is a baby. Cause they feel a presence that's ancient. And it seems both my daughters operate like that. 
My, fir my firstborn, Ava Grace, she operate the same way. White people, all type of different people always like her and they, they like her lips. <laughs> you know, white people got this little Angelina Jolene thing that they like. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and saints, the presence of God will sit on your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The presence of God will sit on your children. Keep on serving the Lord and giving your all. Watch how the presence of God sit on your children. Even if you don't see it right now. Jesus got you. He know you care about that big head children. <laughs> Boy, go to your room. You know, brought him here. <laughs> you don't sumo wrestle him in the back of his temple. You know island women demon beat their children different. Y'all want to go marathons. Y'all ain't right. <laughs> I and people whoop their children different. Y'all want to go marathons and whatnot. I raise you with no daddy. I raise you with no daddy. I raise you with no daddy. You done sumo. I raise you. I raise you with no daddy. I raise. I I raise you with no daddy. You're going to disrespect me. You're going to have to disrespect me in hell. Because I'm about to kill you. <laughs> Child be scared for the life. Oh, I know what to do. <laughs> Funeral service to child. Like, this. like Why is he in the funerals like this? Like, I know y'all said that he died from natural causes. But I never saw him look like this. <laughs> he never had his eyes that big. <laughs> hey, when I said the eyes that big, I started thinking about that man Instagram. <laughs> I was wondering when Bernie Mac spread away. <laughs> he is reincarnated right there. That Bernie Mac, I've been found out. right there.
Look at what uh, Psalm 119 verse 34 says. Or Psalm 119 verse 33. It says, <laughs> it says, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall keep it unto the end. You caught that? Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall keep it unto the end. This faithfulness. Glory to God. Receive the anointing of faithfulness off this text. It's powerful. Receive the anointing of faithfulness off of this text. You see that right here? He said, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall keep it until the end. That's the anointing of faithfulness. And if you don't know Proverbs 28, 20, the faithful man shall abound with blessing. When you receive the anointing of faithfulness, you're receiving the anointing of blessing, the anointing of riches. Because God going to make anyone that follows him fully and submit all their being to him, he's going to make you rich. He's going to make you wealthy and he's going to put a lot of unlimited money in your hand. You see what it says here? Give me understanding, I shall keep your law. Look at verse 34, it's powerful. Give me understanding. See? See? You see this? Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, understanding keeps your heart pure. Agreement. Agreement governs purity. Praise God. I shall observe it with my whole heart. I shall observe it with my whole heart. What it means that there's nothing more interesting than what you're telling me, Jesus. I have no options. There's nothing that's more interesting to me than what you're telling me. See, this is the surrendered life. This is the beautiful life of living for Jesus. Look at what it's telling us here. I will observe what you're telling me to do with my whole heart. What it means that there's not one part of my fascination, my excitement, that rather hears anything. Even if it's a correction, even if it's advice, even if it's your counsel, even if it's you telling me, no, I can't go to this convention. No, I can't go to this city. No, I can't leave my job yet. Anything that you're telling me, I observe it with all my heart. It is the top main event to me. There's nothing that could distract me from it. I love it. I, I wait for it. I anticipate it. And even though it might cut me, it still is producing what I will enjoy. Isn't that glorious? Even if it cut me, it's producing what I will enjoy. Who said that, Job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Though he slay. Do you know what slay mean? Kill. What Job, his heart so perfect. His heart so in love with the Lord. His heart so in love with the Father. That he's saying, even if the Father chose to kill me, my trust will never die. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. He can kill me, but my servanthood will never die. 
He can kill me, but my faith will never die. He can kill me, but my virtue will never die. He can kill me, but my submission will never die. He can kill me, but my worship will never die. Oh, Jesus. He can kill me, but my sowing will never die. He can kill me, but my honor will never die. He can kill me, but my humility will never die. He can kill me, but my perseverance will never die. My patience will never die. My thankfulness will never die. My trust will never die. This is heavy. But yet it produces rest for your soul. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. We praise you, beautiful Jesus. We praise you, beautiful Lord. We praise you, beautiful Lord. We praise you, beautiful Father. Glory to God. Look what he said. Give me understanding. I shall keep your law. If you give me the power of agreement. If you give me the power of agreement. If you give me the anointing to agree with you, Father, I'll keep your law. You know what laws are? Laws are rules. You got to be disciplined to obey rules. What happens if you give a child rules? I don't want you to come in before. Be, uh, be, uh, I, I don't want you to come in after 6 p.m. That child got to be disciplined. Okay, I'm going to play till 4. Okay, I'll go over to my friend's house at 5. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this at 4 and 5. But I'm not going to stay out. I got to get in before 6. So it births discipline in that child. So when they say, come on, let's go over to the arcade. How long are we going to be at the arcade? Until 8 p.m.? No, I can't do it. Why you can't do it? Because I, I got laws. I got rules. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what he was saying, give me understanding and I'll keep discipline. Give me the anointing of understanding and I'll move in discipline. I'll be your disciple. I'll keep your laws. Your rules will rule me. My God. Saints, did you ever think about the reason why the Lord has rules because he want to rule you? You ever thought about that? He has rules because he want to rule you. He got laws because he wants you to be in awe of him. Look at the word law. L-A-W. Take out the L, which represent love, listening, learning. Take out the L. You get the word awe. Because the Lord created the law for you to be in awe of him. Once you be in awe of him, there's no law because love done took over. And in love, there's no law. Wisdom, wisdom here. Wisdom anointed flowing. Wisdom anointed flowing. Wisdom anointed flowing. So he, 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 he made the law because nobody was in awe. When you come into awe of God, you don't need no law because your awe of God will direct you. Your awe of God will direct your attitude, your receptivity, your actions, your thoughts, your words. Because when you're in awe of someone, you don't want anything to jeopardize that awe. So, so saints, look at this. This is so powerful. He made the law. Because he was looking for someone that was going to master all of who he was. And once you master the all of who he is, there is no law needed because your all is going to direct you into perfectly dealing with him. Saints, what happened? Lucifer lost the all. So watch this. When Lucifer lost the all, it produced the flaw.
and you put the F in front of law, you get flaw. And the F stands for foolishness. The F stands for fool, foolishness, uh, folly, failure. Jesus, Jesus, fruitlessness, Jesus. See, see, when I'm flowing in right now, you can't do this unless the Holy Spirit pitch you to do it. You can't do it unless the Holy Spirit is your friend. Let me say it like that. See, the Holy Ghost showing out right now. Come on, Holy Ghost, do your thing. It's your thing. Do what you want to do, Lord. It's your thing. Do what you want to do, Lord. It's your thing. Do what you want to do, Lord. Throw it around in a circle. Oh, oh no, that's not the one. I'm sorry, Lord. That, that, that was not the one that I was talking about. That was not the one. I that that was the wrong thing. It's your thing. It's a different time. He did different time. He had me. Uh, it's your thing. Do what you wanna do, Lord. So you caught that? When Lucifer lost the awe for God, he was wasn't in awe of God. Then it produced flaw. When he lost his awe. So now when Lucifer start affecting people on the earth. And make them lose their awe for God. Then he produced their flaw. And that's why God to get them out of their flaw. Start birthing law. And the law is really not God's full desire. But the law is a training ground to get you back into awe of God where there's no flaw at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, Lord, I prayed for wisdom before I got on here. I asked you to give me understanding to release something fresh, fresh. So I thank you right now as I spoke to you in private. I thank you in public. Because I'm not ashamed of you. Hallelujah. I, I know. I, I'm just and I'm, I'm giving you this, the, the hint, the signal that I see you. I know. I, I see you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I give you glory. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. See, the Lord likes to manifest himself around people that acknowledge him. And you're not ashamed to acknowledge him. You're not ashamed of this gospel. The gospel not going to be ashamed of you. It's going to pitch you on a pedestal because you pit Jesus on a pedestal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You lift Jesus high, he lift you high. Hallelujah is a covenant relationship. It's a covenant fellowship. Not even a relationship because once you relate with him, then he bring you into fellowship. It's a greater anointing. Once you can relate with him because agreement governs purity, now you can see God flow with you at a higher level. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? We got, a lot to give, we got a lot to give Jesus thanks for. We got a five-fold ministry. When I say five-fold ministry, uh, let me say it like this. We got a hundred-fold ministry. <laughs> because we do stuff that, uh, that's apart from healing and, and, and uh, uh, teaching and preaching and apostolic uh, demonstration. And isn't that? We got a hundred-fold ministry. You ain't never heard that before. We heard about fivefold ministry. We got hundredfold ministry. We got ministry that meets every need, every desire, every want. We got we got ministry uh, uh, satisfaction. We got ministry of um, glorification. We got ministry of purification. We got ministry of exaltation. We got a ministry of saturation. See, you saturated with glory. That's why you following me. You're a glory carrier. Don't be stressed out about what's happening in your life. God got you. He looking out for you and he care about you. And, and he don't want you to be worried because he done took that worry on his own chest. And he thinking about all the solutions that he going to bring to you. Just calm down and let him fix it. 
Relax yourself. Let him handle your life. Say, Jesus, come take over. I want you to take over. I want you to rule and reign. Have your way. Don't let me miss you. Don't let me miss you. Don't let me miss you. Don't let me fail you. I got you. I know what I'm doing. Don't let me fall short of your glory. I know. Uh, uh, uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let the spirit of the Lord take over and do what he wants. He know what he's doing. I know what it means to be in situations where it look like the, the, the ground coming up from underneath you and you're about to uh, drown in the ground or, or, or get swallowed in the ground rather. Jesus, he love you too much and you love him too much for him to let your situation stay the same. Something going to happen on this 21st. Something is taking place. You heard? I'm the apostle and the prophet of this revelation. And on this 21st, it's no coincidence that it start on the first day of the week because you done stepped into a fresh portal where the Lord is fixing and perfecting that which concerns you. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 That, that's why the Lord do the things that he do. That's why he do the things he do. Hallelujah. That's why he do the things he do. He know what he doing. He know what he doing. He know what he doing. Look, he had me preach this friend underneath this heavy anointing on the twenty first, and he put it on Sunday. You think that he not? He, the Lord know what he doing. Our days are numbered by the beautiful Father in heaven. Glory to God. Days are numbered by the beautiful Father in heaven. Beautiful Father in heaven. Days are numbered. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. It's glorious. It's glorious. When you understand how much you're standing under, it releases rest. It releases rest. What am I worried about when I got a Jesus that done, done destroyed all that looks like it's standing in front of me? What, 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 what? Holy moly said, what, 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 what? The holy moly donut shop. Holy, even holy moly, holy moly said, what, 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 what? Even holy moly, even holy moly. See, see, that was prophetic. Holy moly. It wasn't just a mole. It was a holy moly. Holy moly. See, 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 you know, when you step into being holy and being led by the Holy Spirit, what, what, what? I feel the glory of God on my body. Ooh, it feel good, too. Ah, let me preach, Lord, for five more minutes. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I, I, see, see, while, while I'm talking to you, I'm walking into him. While, while, while I'm talking to you, I'm walking in to the substance of Jesus being. I'm walking into that chamber. You remember when Steve Urkel used to walk inside that chamber and he came out? Alfonso, Alfonso, whatever they call him, blessed be his God. <laughs> blessed be God. Huh? He came out. Huh? He was ugly and geeky. He came out looking beautified. See? 
See, when you step into that chamber, you become you you come out beautified. You're not looking ugly in your ways and ugly in your attitudes and ugly in your failures and ugly in your distractions and ugly in your temptations. You looking beautified. You a praiser, a worshiper, a lover of King Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. La correbe sete corrama. We give you glory, Lord. See, there's an impartation taking place as you're watching me. It's an impartation for full recovery. Ah, there's a full impartation for full recovery right now on this line. There's an impartation for full recovery right now. Maraba sorete, neroto soromonte, vere caranta parampante le coste, vere sturama. The impartation is our atmosphere that's going to surround you all this week. Don't let nothing damage it. You protect it all this week. There's an impartation taking place right now. See, as uh, we near the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, you're going to see an intensity in my teachings. Because the principalities and powers, they know me in Texas. And they respect me. I'm, I'm doing a meeting right in the heart of the whole, 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 whole city, town. They know who I am. I'm about to bust this place wide open with glory power. Fire of God hits you. You, you see, shoot, see somebody walking in the walking in the hallway. You in a wheelchair? Yes. How long you been in a wheelchair? For 50 years. Oh, you have been in the wheelchair for 50 years? In the name of Jesus, come out of that wheelchair right now. Ho! Things. I see, I've seen people give me their walking stuff and their, their wheelchair just because they was fearful. <laughs> They're like, you're crazy, man. Oh, you're crazy, man. All right. Oh, you're crazy, man. I can walk, nigga. I can walk, nigga. What the, I can walk, nigga. What, I, can, I can see myself now. I can see myself. I couldn't move like this at all. It, I couldn't, oh shoot, this is what I was working with. Oh, this is what I, oh yeah, dude. I'm walking, I'm, I'm walking, boy, what is it? Ah, I'm walking. I've heard people teach in healing ministry, say people get healed off of your faith. Uh, uh, he, people get healed um, when they have faith. The same, some people never will have faith. If Jesus stood in front of him, it's still, is that you, Jesus? It is I. The Bible said, test the spirit by the spirit. <laughs> they done down on the ground. Jesus like, just sit down, girl. I came to bless you. If you keep on talking, I, I put your face down in the ground. <laughs> Angels, come on. Let's do what we had to do. As a matter of fact, let's go. Let's go. Let her test the spirit for the next 20 plus years of her life. Come on. Let's get out of here. Phew. Jesus, is that you? It is I. My eyes heard that we got to test the spirit by the spirit. There's many false prophets and false messiahs that have gone out. Is that you, Jesus? <laughs> Get me up out of here. Come on. Get me up out of here. Come on, few. Jesus done gone. <laughs> Jesus, is that you? It is I. Well, eyes heard. 
that in the last days, there was God. Get me out of here. Come on. Come on. Michael. Michael. Come on. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> come on. If you... That mind, that mind is something else. That mind will mess you up. You think about it. Your mind is an enemy to what you're supposed to receive from God. You Write that down. You caught that, children? Your mind is an enemy of what you're supposed to receive from God. Your mind is an enemy. It hates it hate you receiving what you're supposed to receive. It's adversarial. Your mind is not in agreement with anything that God is about to impart to you. Your mind do not love Jesus. Your spirit do. So, so that's why you got to renew your mind. You see that? Now you understand why you got to renew your mind. Because you, you got to get your mind back into the place of, hey, 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 you're not in control here. No, we're going to follow the way of the Spirit. The Spirit want us to go in this direction. So, 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 hey, listen here, you're going to have to conform yourself to what the Spirit is asking. Your mind is quick to hate God. Because your mind is, your mind is your own Judas. The Lord tell you not to worry. You worry. Oh, well, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Your mind betraying you right there. The Bible said, cast all your cares upon the Lord. I'm stressed out. I'm trying to find out why. Your mind. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to look doing this. Who cares about the mind? That's the, that's the mind telling you how I'm going to look doing this. No, 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 no. It's not about how you're going to look to people. How will you look before the creator that you're going to stand before for all eternity? Check the nigga. Check him. Check, check. Check the nigga before you come in. You got to check him. Check him before you come in. Get him straight. And tell him that you're rocking with Jesus. Check the nigga before you come in. Check him. <laughs> Don't be trying to serve the Lord. No, check the nigga before you come in. And check him. Tell him, uh-uh, we ain't having none of that. No vain imaginations. No high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We not doing all of that. Listen here, player. We ain't doing all of that. We not up there going to be going back and forth. You're not going to be telling me that this ain't of God. No, no, no. And no tradition of men. I'm going to check the nigga before he come in. Check him. Check the nigga before he come in. I decree over all of you all that are my partners. First of all, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for helping me. Some of you are all this year's. I want to say thank you for sowing and keeping your attentiveness to me and not letting the devil corrupt you. Make it easy on me as a leader. And I speak supernatural favor over you right now. The fact that I'm doing this is power. I speak supernatural favor over you right now. I decree and I declare over your life the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham, and the blessing of the prophet Joshua holds over you right now. I speak over you fresh grace, fresh anointing, fresh wisdom right now. I decree and I declare over you a fresh move of God right now. All this week, the blood of Jesus prevails. The blood of Jesus prevails over you. I cancel car accidents. 
doctor's visits, sicknesses, tragedies, pains, diseases, wrong decisions, wrong thoughts, wrong attitudes. I break the spirit, the ancestral spirit that want to corrupt your future, corrupt your inheritance. Every ancestral demon, every familiar spirit, every demon of the past, I cut off your revisitation. The blood of Jesus prevails over your soul right now. I lose money that been owed to you. I lose finances that belong to you. By the power of the Holy Ghost, as an apostle and prophet of Jesus Christ, as I stand in his presence, I lose wealth transference. I lose financial wisdom. I lose fresh favor with work. Fresh favor with God and men. A good understanding. I shield you with favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's done. We praise the Lord. It is finished.